This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode we continue the transfer of training with book 3 In chapter 2 this is section 3 part 1 The Secret Dream part 1 David You must see the causes of the things you choose between exactly as they are. Text, chapter 27, section 7 I am as God created me. I am either a real effect of a real cause or I have separated from God and this is a world of reality. Thinking in the ego's terms, I am a person at the mercy of all the forces of the world, including other people. It seems to be real. This brings it down to right mind, wrong mind and present decision. It is a choice of purpose. It is not a choice of specifics between objects, things, persons and behaviors. For example, The thought that I can choose to raise or lower my hand is an illusion. It is a trick. It is an example of magic since it is not a real choice. Even though in this world it appears to be a real choice. It seems as if I can choose between two behaviors. But that is all automatic based on the choice of purpose. It is pointless to try to control one's behavior. You can control the direction of your thinking. That is the only thing you can control. You cannot control the script. You cannot control the screen. All of the seeming upsets that come up around specifics are just the mind denying that insisting that it does have a say in controlling what is on the screen. This is about moving towards mysticism. Perceiving yourself as in the world, working in particular roles with particular obligations, etc. all flies in the face of what we are talking about. Keep questioning. Keep tracing it in. It cannot be this way and that way. It has to be one or the other. The strain always comes when you try to make a compromise between spirit and ego, between right mind and wrong mind. The strain comes from trying to mix a little of this with a little of that. Ease and effortlessness comes from following the thinking inward and saying, Hallelujah! It cannot be both ways. I am not going to tell you that you have to stop judging. Come with me. Let us look at all this so deeply that you begin to see that judgment is impossible. It is absolutely impossible. An early step is to see that judgment is a device to maintain separation. That is still speaking about it as if it is something real you have to deal with. It is just a stepping stone. We want to go into this deeply enough to see that judgment is impossible. To see that you have that you do not have to do anything. That is where the peace and effortlessness comes in. If you are in the mode of thinking that you have just got to stop judging because it is killing you, making you depressed, angry or furious, who is the I that has to stop judging? A friend was recently talking about having to give up a belief. 
She was aware that it was not about her actions, but about a belief. She said, I have to give up the, this belief and I still feel wrong about having to give up beliefs. Even the idea that you really have to give up a belief has to be questioned. The Christ does not have to give up beliefs. Friend, once you see the belief for what it is, there is nothing to hang on to or give up. It just dissolves. David, yes, the ease comes in when you see the impossibility of judgment. There is no feeling wrong when you see something is impossible. If you still think you are a real I that has to give up the belief in separation, just keep questioning who is the I that likes a certain climate or the I that likes certain foods? Who is the I? Keep looking at who the I is. Can that I be real? Friend, as I identify less with the I than that then that stuff has no meaning? David, even the metaphor of identifying less or more does not work. It is about coming to the clarity that it is one or the other. It cannot be both. One has to be impossible. And that is good news. That is where the non-compromise comes in. It is not about trying to make a bargain. It is not about holding on to a construct or even talking about it. When you begin to see the impossibility of it all, even the need to have sessions like this begins to fade. I always think of Ramana Maharishi as a great model. It was his very presence that people would come to be in. He did not do a lot of teaching in a verbal sense. I remember the first time I saw a photograph of his face. Wow! When I looked into his eyes, I just saw his very kind, sweet and gentle eyes and smile. It was such a symbol for me. I had read some of his writings and they were a great symbol as well. We want to get to that clarity. Friend, I know I still talk in terms of more and less. And I even hear it when I say it because I realize that it cannot be. But it still seems to be that way for me. David, you cannot help but talk that way. The words are just a reflection of where the mind is. What choices can be made between two states, but one of which is clearly recognized? Who would be free to choose between effects when only one is seen as up to him? An honest choice could never be perceived as one in which the choice is split between a tiny you and an enormous world with different dreams about the truth in you. Text, Chapter 27, Section 7 It seems to be that there is this struggle going on, in which the choice is split between a tiny you, a person, and an enormous world. Whether you call it society, the world, or whatever, it has nothing to do with anything. There is no conflict between the individual and society. There is no conflict between the individual and the system. They are both made up. The individual is a fictitious construct. This system is a fictitious construct. The battle between the individual and the system is a fictitious battle. It is a great joy to begin to see that it has to be that way. This is all just made up. It is all make-believe. 
Once I see it for what it is, I am never going to be in conflict with the U.S. government or with the IRS again, nor with a religious instruction or my family of origin. You know how people seem to have difficulties with their families? They do not go back to see their families, or they see their families too much and feel all enmeshed. The basic thing underneath all of it is the belief in personhood. The belief that there is a difference between this person or this subject and these other people. It is an illusory difference. There is no difference. They are all just images. The gap between reality and dreams lies not between the dreaming of the world and what you dream in secret. They are one. Text chapter 27, section 7 The dreaming of the world is the projected cosmos. All the images that are perceived through the body's eyes. What you dream in secret is the unconscious belief in separation, the belief that you have separated from God. The dream you dream in secret is like the tree trunk. The dreaming of the world would be all the seeming fragments, the branches and the leaves. Everything in the projected universe is the dreaming of the world. And what you dream in secret is the belief in separation. They are one. The dreaming of the world is but a part of your own dream you gave away and saw as if it were its start and ending. Both. Text chapter 27, section 7. It seems as if the dreaming of the world started back in historical times. The Big Bang seems to be its start. Scientists are now speculating about its ending. They call it implosion theory. Einstein and a number of scientists have said, the universe is expanding and will reach a point of equilibrium when it will start coming together and eventually implode, the beginning and the end. In the dreaming of the world, it all seems grand and large. End of part one of section three of chapter two of book three. We will continue with the concluding part of this section in tomorrow's episode.